Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. Or, geez, I don't know. Are you a Wisconsin Badger fan now? No, oh, no, goodness. no. I can be and you didn't go east, to, You I? didn't go to Central. East? Mm-hmm. I can be east. Okay. We're on the air for the next half hour, and uh, we've got a lot to get to, so let's get right to it. And uh, I'm going to start at Amsoil Arena. Whoa, right here at home. A home arena for UMD. And I got uh, seats in the front row both Friday and Saturday night. Okay. Two different uh, people that I went with on each night. And the first thing I noticed was when I got into my seat how awful the glass was. Dirty, you mean? Or From the, what? The, the, the puck. Over oh, the, puck's in it. And all the black marks. And they're not cleaning it. It was horrible. Um, back in the day when Walt Brulee ran the deck and uh, my cousin, Aaron Hinnenkamp, was one of the Zamboni drivers, they would have parties and order up some pizzas and they'd get out the ladders and their brushes and whatever they had to do and they would clean that glass. How often? However often it took. And I didn't realize it until I sat down Friday night and then Saturday night on the other side. The other side actually looked a little worse but I think they have an obligation, Jerry, to uh, keep that glass clean. Especially for the ones in the lower, the uh, sea. These seats are not cheap. It's very expensive to go to a UNB hockey game. And i got to tell you, I can't imagine that any other team in the league has glass that looks that way. Hmm. It was terrible. And uh, it says a lot about the management. It says a lot about your dedication to the, the product that you're putting out. And I think that the UMD officials, and maybe even the NCHC, um, has to have something to say in this. I wonder why the cameramen that take pictures down below by the glass don't say something, how bad it is. But they have holes, I mean, <clears throat> two in the corners and then... The, in between the two benches. And- Again, talking to Walt Brulee, I mentioned it to Walt, and Walt told me, yep, he says, we used to have order pizzas and get the boys out there. That's the way to do it. Get it clean. Get a teamwork. And again, I, I think that they have an obligation to do that, and I, it says something about the staff, but uh, um, that's something that really needs detail. And I'll tell you what, if I was down there running the show, it would, uh, it would get done. There you go, Amsoil Arena. But I ain't running the show. Let's get it done. <laughs> Kenny's promoting this, well, and I'm, you know, I think it's only right. You, you, you're, you're right, though. You're, you're selling a product not just on the ice, but your arena was voted and got all the accolades. There are all these different uh, organizations. Right. And you sit behind that glass, and even the people around, I said to the person I was with, I said, I can't believe this. And somebody else turned around and said, yeah, what's, what's going on? To pay that much money for a ticket and then have a hard time seeing through the glass, yeah, you're it's, right. It's, it's terrible. Yep. You know, you might expect that at Freiburger or, you know, maybe even the Heritage. I, I got to tell you, I don't even think the Heritage has glass that bad. No. It was horrible. So get that taken care of. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the UNB Bulldogs and the product on the ice. Uh, I got to tell you, that, that Friday night game against Uno was a little bit of a disappointment to some degree. Uh, the 2-2 to two tie, uh, the Bulldogs dominated in the overtime, and Dominic Toninato, my goodness, uh, two goals in the game. Right. And he had the game-winning goal on his stick right in front of the net. Right. He had and a lot of chances that night. He really did. You he, know. Had four, he could have had four or five goals. He had the game-winning goal right there in overtime. Uh, didn't happen, but uh, the next night, Saturday night, uh, a very convincing 5 nothing win. Uh, good right. weekend for the Bulldogs. Right. Five Overall, out of a possible six five points. points. And that, that kept them uh, number one in the pairwise. The funny thing about it, they're off this weekend. I, don't, I just never understand why. This in, late in the season. Yeah. Why uh, are they taking a weekend off? This is a time they should be playing every weekend. Well, no, Denver to took they, – they were That last this, weekend. Yeah. So they play uh, Colorado College home and home. So I'm just wondering, Colorado College is one of the lower team. It's the lowest team in, in the NCHC, but it's, it's a low team in college hockey. And if they beat them both games home and home, 
Does that put them number one in the pairwise? That's going to be I, I Colorado like to, College. No, Denver. Denver. Yeah, because they're number two. Okay, I wasn't sure who you were saying if who beats number who. two. So if Denver beats Colorado College, right. both nights. I'm just wondering if what that's going to do with the pairwise. Well, I want to know how Denver gets four first place votes when they had the weekend off. <laughs> in the co- in the coaches poll, they didn't lose. <laughs> so these polls are again, they're just so they're silly. Weird. But yeah. you know, we look at them and we continue to talk uh-huh. about them. But uh, and you know, there's no perfect system. I, I always looked at the pairwise, and again, Bulldogs are first, Denver is second. And that's all that counts, anyhow. Even if you don't like it, right. the pairwise is the only thing that counts to get to the to the next step. Yeah. So again, the Bulldogs are defeating. Uh, I call them Uno. That's how it is on the board. University of Nebraska, Omaha. Right. If you want to go through the whole deal there, but uh, I was surprised at Saturday night's attendance, seven thousand eight. Is that what they said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do a lot of people? I mean, there's Friday night they had over six thousand people, and there was a lot of empty seats. That's Friday what I night. thought. There's and I know it's paid. Things. I get that, but where are these people at that are paying for these games and they're not showing up? A little odd, but yep. uh, the Bulldogs will uh, skate at uh, Colorado College this weekend. And uh, No, they take a week off. A- um, yep, after this week off, then they'll skate at Colorado College uh, February 17th and 18th. Only one more home series, Jerry, against Miami of Ohio the 23rd and 24th. That's a Thursday, Friday. Is it? Yes. Okay, I'm glad you pointed that because out. Because the reason is... Yet. The Section 7 oh, sure. AA and A are playing their playoff games, their semis at the Amsoil. So there will well, be four make, high school games on that Saturday, the 25th. Make a note then. Uh, the weekend, well, it's going to be Thursday and f- Friday, February 23rd and 24th, UMD and Miami. And then the Bulldogs will end the season on the road at Western Michigan, March 3rd and 4th. And Western Michigan, uh, I don't know, they had a little surprise attack by Arizona State. Uh, they beat them on Friday and then tied Arizona State in Kalamazoo on Saturday. Yeah, they're still number five in the pairwise. <laughs> yeah, no, those are non-conference. Are they exhibition games with Arizona State? No, that's uh, it's this, uh, it counts, but it doesn't count as conference game, you know. They yeah. don't get no points or anything. But Why would they host Arizona State this late in the season? They probably decided in the schedule maybe someone knew someone from one of the schools. and Arizona State has to find in the schedule, you know. Mm. they got to play someone every week. All right. So, hey, and the Lady Bulldogs, they had a good weekend. They did a Friday night win against North Dakota, and then Saturday night they had a big crowd where they had a promotion, Cram the Am, and, uh, again, over 2,000 people and a sweep of North Dakota. Were you there? No, I wasn't. I wonder... I, did, I forgot to ask anyone, was there 2,000 people there, or was that just tickets sold again? No, there, uh, it's both. I, I mean, it's the attendance that's listed uh, in the official uh, game sheet was 2,000. Okay. And I would think for that game, that's fairly accurate. They had a nice promotion where you paid a dollar to get right. in. Or, or a if, canned good. Yeah. Well, not yeah. necessarily a canned good. Oh. Bring a box of spaghetti. Or, oh. You know, hey, well, we some, could have had dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you bring the ragu, I'll bring the spaghetti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we shouldn't steal, but we were hungry that night. <laughs> uh, what other? What is uh, the deal up in North Dakota? North Dakota seems to continue to struggle, but uh, they're they're hanging there. I we're, think they, you know, they don't have the same team as last year. They lost some key players, but uh, a very good team still. But I think some of their key players they have this year, there's some injuries there. That's what I think is going mm. on. But I think, you know, like North Dakota always does, when it comes down to the playoffs, they'll be ready. You know, getting back to UMD Bulldogs, Hunter Misk uh, had the shutout Saturday night. That was the fifth shutout this season for him. did not that tie a record? That tied a UMD record. Uh, Alex Stalock, Brant Nicklin, might have been one or two others in there. Uh, but my goodness, yeah. the, the freshman uh, goaltender, uh, you know, he, you think back to 2011 when they won the championship. Uh, Kenny Ryder, he was a senior, if I'm not mistaken. He was a senior that year. and But yet this team seems poised to make it right. to Chicago with a freshman uh, goaltender. Right. 
And now another Minnesota team, the Minnesota Gophers, they're playing real good, and they're um, number four in the pairwise. Yeah, they swept Penn State, and uh, the Gophers, uh, what do they got coming up here for hockey then? They will take on... Uh, Ohio State, I think, at Ohio State. Is that what it is? I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, well... Okay. In there. Yeah, Wisconsin. No, that's the oh, ladies. Oh, I see. They they host Penn State, go to Ohio State, yeah. and then go to Penn State. Okay. So they have just a weekend in between uh, Penn State. But, uh, yeah, at Ohio State, um, the Gophers, and then they go to Penn State, and then they will host Wisconsin February 24th and 25th. And uh, then they will uh, travel to Michigan and then host Michigan State. Uh, who comes out of the Big Ten? Right now, Wisconsin and Minnesota are tied for uh, the lead in the Big Ten. In the Big Ten, yeah. Well, Michigan and Michigan State are way down. Penn State is kind of a surprise how good they were playing until this last weekend. Well, it's interesting you say that because Wisconsin beat uh, Michigan State, and then they got Michigan coming up yet. So Yeah, Wisconsin should be the way they're playing. They're, they should beat yeah. Michigan. Then Ohio State's been playing pretty good this year, too. Let's see, are they even in the pairwise? No, they're not. They're right after the pairwise. There was uh, news out of Wisconsin, uh, sad news. We yeah. heard the uh, passing of former Badger hockey coach Jeff Sauer. Yeah, good guy. One of the nicest guys in hockey. Talked to him many times down at the XL and whatever when he came up uh, to the Gophers or I was out in Wisconsin. And, uh, boy, I mean, it's a big loss, I mean, in hockey, because he, st he still was around hockey all the time. Well, I was always impressed when I would catch the uh, broadcast on one of the cable channels of the Wisconsin Boys Hockey Tournament, and Jeff Sauer was part of the, uh, the crew, if you will. Right. And um, another thing, uh, he, um, he was the one that hired um, you know, one of our guests, Mike McMillan, in USA Hockey, his daughter coaches St. Alaska. Well, she was the third goalie on the Wisconsin men's team. And so he's the first one of, you know, that's mm. uh, a female goalie. I mean, usually you he's don't see that. Something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I, I wasn't aware of that or yeah. hadn't recalled it. But, uh, again, uh, former Badger uh, head hockey coach Jeff Sauer passed away on February 2nd of pancreatic cancer. He was 73 years old. And uh, he won a national championship back in 1983 and 1990. Right. Uh, he replaced his mentor, the legendary Bob Johnson. Mm -hmm. Sauer never uh, let uh, the fact that he was you know, following a legend get to him, showing nothing but class and composure throughout his tenure. In the end, he created a lasting legacy at uh, Wisconsin, one that stands on its own merit. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, he never... Well, if I've heard from a few friends and that knew him better than I did, um, said that he never relayed that he was that sick to right. anyone. And, and another thing is, he's a St. Paul boy. He grew up in St. Paul, and so he's a, he's from the state of hockey still. <laughs> Jeff Sauer um, was inducted into the UW Athletic Hall of Fame last fall, and uh, yeah, he'll be missed. Yeah, it's too bad. What else do we have in college hockey? Scholastica had a split this uh, weekend against Concordia, and uh, they've got <laughs> they've got quite a, uh, a road trip coming up. They've got two games at St. Norbert and two games at Adrian. Two and, of the better uh, teams. They um, boy, if they come out of this, you know, two and two even, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's going to be a, a, a big ac accomplishment for the Saints. Uh, so yeah, well, good. So, the Minnesota Wild, they're on their last leg of this road trip, and they, they won two out of three, and God, Granlin getting the hat trick the last game. Yeah, up in Vancouver on Saturday night. He's a scoring machine lately. You know, he is, but he's not, uh, he doesn't celebrate his goals, and no. that, that concerns me. Because he doesn't, <laughs> well. I mean, guess where he's from? Well, Do they I know. any of them celebrate? He's from Finland. <laughs> I know that. We know that. But uh, you know, there's such a difference, a contrast between him and Zach Parisi. Right. When Zach Parisi scores, there's so much emotion. And uh, Mikel, it's almost like a whole hum. Oh, geez, I scored yeah. a goal. 
Um, and, and I'm not, you know, I mean, he's a great player. He really is. I've been critical of him over the years. Um, but uh, he's Loosen really, up. He, he's really coming around. There's no question about it. And i got to tell you, I would be so thrilled to see the Minnesota Wild hoist a Stanley Cup to be able to see Miko Koivu uh, hand that uh, or hoist that cup. My goodness. He's playing his best hockey ever this season. He really is. I'll tell you what, if you loosen up on uh, Mr. Granlin, I will get a crew to wash the windows at Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, uh, yeah, the Minnesota Wild, uh, they're on a roll. They play Winnipeg t- well, Tuesday night, uh, the week we're taping. And then they'll host Chicago Wednesday night, and it's a start of, what, an eight-game homestand? Right. Eight games in a row. Eight games. That's uh, amazing. It goes from February 8th to February 27th, and then they just go on the road for two games and come back home for two games. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Wild are in the driver's seat. They're, uh, what, four points, four or five points ahead of Chicago, and they have three games in hand with the Blackhawks. Yeah. They're after. Top- Hey, after the game tomorrow night, there's only 30 games left in the regular season. Jeez. It's going fast. Yeah. I mean, they're in they're in first place right now, and so hope they can hold on. This will be the first home game with Chicago this year, and that's kind of surprising too. Yeah. Being in the same division, I mean. You know, you look at there. the uh, plus minus uh, throughout the league. The Wild have the top five players in the plus minus category. Our, our Minnesota Wild players. It's just phenomenal. I yeah. believe uh, Jason Zucker is the the leader in the league in plus minus, and then uh, uh, Ryan Suter, uh, Mikel Granlund, uh, uh, Miko Koivu, <laughs> and uh, my goodness, uh, they are really uh, getting things done. And after that letdown at Calgary, they pick right back up and go to Vancouver and uh, six to three win. Also, that was the uh, NHL debut of Minnesota Wild rookie Adam, or I'm sorry, Alex Tuck. Yep. You know, I got to tell you, I think that the uh, the analysis by Mike Greenlee, he is amazing. I really like listening to him, and he's always uh, very fluent when he gives his his thoughts on on plays. And uh, he had glowing remarks for Alex Tuck. Okay, I didn't. I missed that game. No, but um, with all that scoring, you know, with uh, Grandlin getting a hat trick and that, but I bet there's a lot of talk by everyone on him not really looking at Tuck, you know. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. But uh, I was just looking too on the stats for the Minnesota Wild, and I think they got a chance for six players to get 20 goals this year. They got uh, Granlin has 15 already. Stahl has 16. Zucker has 16. Koivu has 16. Niederreiter has 15. And Coyle has 13. And uh, then the Parisi and Halla have 10. And I think the most amazing one is Chris Stewart on the fourth line getting 11. He doesn't really do the power play. He doesn't. That's amazing to me. It is. Yeah. So he's, he's probably the biggest star of all of them, I think. <laughs> well, that's that says says it all right there. They're getting contributions from all four lines. Uh, the goaltending, uh, Devin Dubnik uh, leads the league in a few of the categories at least. And Darcy Kemper's played very well. Well, in the last game. So, yeah, I hope they keep it up. I'll be a funny, um, I mean, who they put up for the... the so the Vegas team, new Vegas team, can pick one of them. It's going to be interesting. Who they throw out there? <laughs> yeah, the Las Vegas Golden Knights uh, players make a, a, a list of players they protect, and of course those that are unprotected. The uh, I saw one of the mock uh, drafts, if you will, uh, entry drafts, and uh, Jonas Brodin was on the right because I the think block. they would save. Suter, Dumba, and Spurgeon. Scandella. He's a, he's, they can pick him up. Yeah. It'll be, you know, Bolin, all of them. Sure. They can only save three. So, um, Suter has a no trade or nothing, so he has to, can't move him anyhow, so they have to. Now, how does that work with their contracts? If uh, Las Vegas drafts them, they assume the contracts. If they, I mean, 
all these players that can't move, they're probably saying, I don't want to move. Yeah. So they can't move them. So they can't, they'll be on the list to save. Huh. Yeah. But they can only save seven forwards now. Some of these players, okay, look, here's seven right here. Granlin, Stahl, Zucker, Koibu, Ko I mean, Ko Niederreiter. That's six right there. And they can get one more. Well, Parisi, he has to be saved. Yeah. So that means there's a lot of young talent there that they can move on. <laughs> a little bit of a... Uh... Uh, situation going on out in Arizona where the university at Arizona State there has uh, voted down a new arena. Really? Yeah, and that was going to be in conjunction with the NHL team. So that that's a big question mark on wow. what will happen forward from there. Wow. I just wonder about that Arizona team and whether or not uh, the Coyotes stay in, in Arizona in the next year or two. Yeah, they can uh, move that team like up to Seattle or up to uh, another team up by um, Toronto area, yeah. Hamilton or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you don't know. That's weird. When you try to build a program, then you can't even get a stadium. And this week, I think it's this week, someone told me that I think Proctor is voting on their, they're going to get a new hockey stadium. For the uh, high school? Yeah. or Because the they need or... one. I hope they do. That's the worst rink in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they do. You're I mean, right. And if they don't, I mean, hey, they're just saying no to kids. Because, hey, that's the worst uh, sports community right now for facilities. Hmm. If they don't fix that stuff, you know, the kids aren't going to, the good players are not going to stay. I can honestly tell you, I have not been in that arena since I played uh, youth hockey in the early 70s, mid-70s even, and... Uh, it seems wow. like one side the ice is up a foot and everything. It's weird. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I think well. on one side I can slam dunk and the other side I can't even hit the net. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the wilderness had a big sweep this weekend. Yeah, they're um, playing real good. Minot. They're playing real good. It seemed like they play this Minot team a lot this month. Because mm -hmm. they play and they have to go out and play uh, Bismarck and Minot one game this next weekend. Then they come back home and play Minog for two games. Well, so Minot five and, games, yeah, one month. And the Wilderness, they were one and two in the standings, and so right. I don't think they surpassed Minot with this sweep. No, they're six points behind. Okay, so, but uh, one thing is, there's four teams that make it to on each division to the playoffs, and then the top two will be the home series. Yeah, and another thing to look at is that. We're home. I mean, the Her Duluth Heritage Center is putting on the Robertson Cup, where the, that's the championship for the North American Hockey League. Yeah. And that'll be in uh, May. So that's something to look forward to. High school hockey uh, over the weekend. I know Duluth East was down in Elk River, and they lost to Elk River. And uh, where are some of the other uh, well, things? I, I was at that game, and I'll tell you what. East, uh, they're not hitting. They're not going to compete against teams that have more skilled players than that. But if they hit, they can play with anyone. And I, like um, someone told me, they said one of the kids, you know, if they put two eggs in his breezer, they'd still be fresh eggs and without no, the shells wouldn't be cracked. <laughs> okay. I'm not naming players, but all right, all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we got two weeks left in the high school hockey, and um, then the playoffs start. And I'll tell you what, this is everything for seeding now. Like tonight, I mean, we're doing this show Monday, and tonight, Monday, uh, East has to go out to Cloquet. And if they can win that game, I think they have a fair chance of getting the number two seed still. But if they lose, I think there's going to be big argument for Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids has lost two of their section games and tied one. So East just lost their first section game. Now Hermantown beat uh, Cloquet, and then Cloquet uh, played St. Francis. What happened in that game? Cloquet, what was it, 14-2. to two. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they Jeez. went crazy went to St. Francis. St. Okay. Francis has short some players in a lot of these games. They only had like 12 
skaters on the on, on And I missed the, the score against Marshall, uh, Cloquet Marshall. Oh, that was something like 4-1. They won. Cloquet won. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, Cloquet has games, uh, like you say, tonight, Monday we're taping, the 6th, the uh, East, and then they host Moorhead. They go to Roseau, they host Grand Rapids, and then end out at Proctor. Right. Okay. And then Duluth East, uh, after Cloquet, they are at Bloomington Jefferson. Maple uh, Grove up here. Maple Grove, Saturday the 11th, 3 o'clock at Heritage, and then at Lakeville South. That's the end of the season for them, then. Well, that's really something, how they've ended this season. Now, they're going to have four road games and one home game in the right. final five. Right. They had a lot more road games this year than home games. But the main thing is East has to get that number two seed. And if they do that, then Rapids will be three and Cloquet uh, will be four. How did Duluth Marshall do at St. Thomas Academy? They lost, like, seven to three. Okay. That's uh, St. Thomas is a top ten team in Class AA. Grand Rapids went to Wayzata. They won one nothing in overtime, and they played at White Bear Lake. And they won that game four two. Jeez, uh, Grand Rapids will play at Bemidji uh, tomorrow, Tuesday the seventh. They'll host Moorhead and travel to Cloquet, and then they'll host Duluth Denfeld. So, yeah, so they got three, three good games. They have yeah. tests. Well, yeah, get them ready. Well, what's your thought? What's your feeling on how this might end up here? Well, I think East can get the number two seed, but I think the semis are going to be the real deal. <laughs> I think I think it's going to be the top four. It's going to be Elk River, Cloquet, East, and, Ra- and Rapids. Rapids. Yeah. But there's a possibility now if East goes to East can be playing Duluth Marshall in the quarterfinals. It, yeah, quarterfinals. And I know since Mike Randolph has been at East, he has never lost a quarterfinal game. And Marshall can beat him, you know, because just the the mixture of being in town, the kids know each other, they're friends. Mm. I mean, and it probably means more to the Marshall to beat East than anything else in the world, you know. <laughs> you can uh, check out the rankings, Minnesota Hockey Connection. Jerry puts together his rankings, and we'll get through the rankings here real quick. Okay, Class AA. We got Eden Prairie. They're playing real good right now, and they beat Edina last week. And Minnetonka, Holy Family is number two. Edina had a good week, uh, besides the losing the game with um, Eden Prairie. Elk River is on a roll, but now they have a soft schedule, so they should hold up in the fourth spot or even move up after this week. Stillwater. All these teams after four have lost games. So really Stillwater, go Centennial, St. Thomas Academy, number seven. Lakeville North, eight. Grand Rapids, nine. Ten, Hill Murray. Class A, Hermantown. Breck, number two. Delano, number three. St. Paul Academy, number four. East Grand Forks, five. St. Cloud Cathedral, six. Alexander, seven. Montemita, eight. Hibbing, nine. And Greenway, ten. My goodness. Well, that's it. Boy, this zoomed by. Yeah. Um... We want to thank the staff at PAC TV that produced this show in City Hall, the PAC TV offices, the PAC TV studio. And you can look for us online, mnhockeyconnection.com. And go to our Facebook page and like us there on Facebook as well. And, uh, Jared, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back here next week to drop the puck. Okay, you know. See you at the rink. <laughs>